Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is David Laud. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Virum. Virum is a company headquartered in Calgary, Alberta. We have clients on our digital twin platform uh, that go across from Singapore to South Africa to the U.S. as well as Canada as we continue to grow. And today what we're going to talk about is really driving and improving business continuity um, through simple and rich digital twins. We'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the industry overall. We'll talk about some of the commodity changes and how that's affecting digital twin implementation. And we'll also talk about some real specific use cases around how to leverage digital twin technology across the entire asset lifecycle. Where is all of those critical data points and all of that information? And how do we start to elevate that and make it available across the entire enterprise? So the first start of that journey and in business continuity as well is you have to get your historical data lined up and in place in order to capture the next stuff and start building it in proper building blocks. It might seem like a monumental task to say, we're gonna take this large oil and gas company, we're gonna provide digital twin instance for all of its physical assets. And I can tell you it's not as difficult as you may think. Let's see what you have today. And I can promise you with all the clients that we've dealt with, that there's actually more data there and we can help you find that, bring it and elevate it to start driving value. Because this is really all about a few layers. The first one is about aggregating your data to make sure you see it at an asset level to see what's really happening. And it requires accessible data, complete data, and proper organized data in order to maximize your existing investments. So as leaders of you know, our oil and gas institutions and our companies here, you know, it's all about giving our employees and our colleagues the right tools in order for them to learn, in order for them to stay productive. Presenting that data that you have in a 3D context, such as the image on the screen here, you're giving that data in a consumptive way that makes sense to humans. So one of the questions that we throw out when we talk to clients, they say, okay, this sounds great. We wanna go after a digital twin implementation. What systems is this replacing right now? So how can I draw the right ROIs that I'm eliminating this system or that system uh, in order to take this technology on? This is a primary system that you do not currently have. This is a primary layer that will connect everything you've already invested in to make it far more productive, to let your employees work quicker, more efficiently, to improve safety, you'll be able to stop, start to drop various components of licensing and save money through that application. But you need to view this as a game-changing productivity tool. And from a business continuity perspective, it's never been more important. You need to be able to be on site without going to the site. And we'll show you how to do that. So when you look at what the Virum Digital Twin Instance does, we will take in all of your existing CAD models, 2D or 3D. We'll bring in all your geospatial data, so your reality scans, survey scans, whether that could be your UAV drone flights, laser or photogrammetry. We'll connect in with all your asset information, so you may already have, whether it's document management systems such as SharePoint or otherwise. And then look at real construction and operating data, okay? What is happening in the field in real time? So it's a connection between the legacy of what you were trying to build, what has been built or is being built, and then what is being operated. A fundamental system that can view it all and that can put layers over time in there so that you can actually make very well-informed decisions and move the process along quicker. And one of our claim to fame here and a true differentiator is we can be live and operational in 48 hours after receiving your data. So. The way that we operate our licensing model is one common license for the asset owner that can be opened up to any of the third parties that they're using. So it's not a per seat license. It doesn't become very cost detrimental to be adding more people. This is what I talked about earlier, elevating data that's traditionally siloed out of those silos up into a common layer where everyone can view it together. We're completely web-based, so no software, no hardware required. All you need is the laptop that you're using today or potentially a Surface tablet. 
And then you can start to manipulate these very complex 3D models in an enlarged scale. You can overlay big geospatial data sets and these flow very well. It's almost like a video game model. One of the biggest challenges that we see um, through asset lifecycle management, but specifically in that data and information is a significant information loss that happens at construction into handover. And if you look at you know, McKinsey's research that's been done, they'll tell you that around 30% of valuable data created in the construction and design phase is lost at project closeout. So now you need a common repository for the historicals of decisions that got made through planning, design, and engineering through construction and making it this very powerful, very data-rich platform uh, going forward. What Verum's platform allows you to do is it gives you remote access, visual confirmation of site conditions, and it gives you all the data that you traditionally haven't been able to get. When you're looking at what digital twin platform to pick, look at one that participates from planning all the way through operations and maintenance, one that can take in your IoT data, right? One that can link into your existing investments and systems, and one that opens up the entire platform uh, to your whole company. If you look at just technology, technological adoption, you know, some would say that we're overestimating the impact technology AI and ML is going to have in the next two to three years, but we're drastically underestimating what it's going to do in the next 10. So we have an opportunity in our companies today to make the decisions to line us up for that rocket ship growth in digital you know, through that next decade. The price of data capture going down, the quality of data capture is going up based on these devices. And, you know, this industry and these industries are going to continue to grow. And digital twin adoption is only going to skyrocket here as a result of some of these changes. When you're looking at picking the right platform, this is going to evolve, like I said, over the next decade into system level, where today is about getting all the data together, lining up with the right platform that can scale and grow to tie into your existing investments. And as AI and ML plugins, you know, and data sets change and those libraries become available, it's leveraging and plugging them in. Where does Virum position itself? If you look in the very top right, large enterprise platforms, those are the Hexagons, the Bentleys, the Avivas, very industrial focus, very large scale, take a long time to implement, um, but they're great platforms. And then in the very bottom left, you've got you know free 3D viewers to look at geospatial data, or maybe some of your CAD files. There is a huge spot in the middle, we call it 70, 80% of the market, that wants to be live in 48 hours, that they want lots of rich features, they want those baseline analytics, and they want to work with a team that has the industry expertise to get this moving and get their companies going forward. And we have one client that, due to COVID, has been shut down uh, on their site, but they need to get some bidding done from third-party contractors on some work that needs to get done in the facility. And now what they're able to do is to clip out the environment, the CAD, the geospatial section, and then let the third party log into the system in order to start to make annotations, do measurements and put and knock some of the contingency out of their bids. They reduce their bidding from 10 days on a quote down to two in some cases. That's a huge gain of an entire week on getting your projects back up and running. Modulized construction is certainly prevalent and it is coming and you're starting to see large modules being constructed around the world or components that arrive on site that need to be bolted together. In this particular example, we had undersized pumps and spools at a tailings and fluids facility. Uh, what we were able to do is have the client ask the fabricator of the pumps and the spools to take a quick laser scan of these devices. We virtually assembled them within the facility and found out that they were in fact not cut flush and they weren't gonna fit. So they were chromium carbide uh, overlay uh, these can't be field fitted on a seven day critical outage window. Um, they would have discovered the tie-in points weren't gonna match on day six. What they believe this saved them was one, um, two to $3 million in lost revenues on a, on a site that was producing 90,000 barrels a day. Um, two, reduced field exposure hours of two to 300 hours while they tried to fix and manually do this. 
And the safety component there was significant because had people in the field tried to just cowboy tie this up and put the system under pressure with the bolts, it likely would have sheared or blown off either in the next maintenance window or during production and been catastrophic. So de-risking critical projects can be done in this platform. And then for the next turnaround procedure, you've got full access to this as well. So huge ROI for our clients. And then in operations and asset management, the data is all out there. It's all in these field sites. The ability to collaborate, look from the site, working with the people in the field, having 24-7 access to real-time site information, enabling off-site training, right? Letting people do virtual walkthroughs before they go out to site, uh, and linking all your traditional 2D documents into those environments becomes great for maintenance planning and starting to open up your environments again. So, you know, your digital methods, which we've talked about today, uh, improving safety, which is absolutely paramount, um, driving cost out of the business, driving more productivity is great versus, you know, traditionally traveling to site, fumbling with finding documentation and not knowing which systems and where to pull these out. Put it all in a cloud-based layer, let everyone in access this over the internet and start to work differently and work safely. This is what Virum's platform and digital twi twin technologies provide. It gives you the fundamental map, that 3D context to look at all of the information that's traditionally been not available uh, to your employees and to your organizations.